Yo, hey folks, how's it going? It's Kevin, Big K Horror here, and uh, I want to do a video um, discussing this very topic. Um, why did I start liking horror films at my very young age? Um, or why did I just start liking horror films, period? And um, it's something I get a lot on social, well, I get a lot in general, you know, face to face, but since I don't go out at all in the past couple of years, I usually, I, it's something I get a lot on social media, you know, everywhere from Facebook to, um, you know, Instagram, uh, kick, K I K, however you want to pronounce it, um, real jock, uh, you know, just, um, you know, so many social sites and stuff like that. So I thought I would address this in this video. Um, and, you know, I could be so easy and quick to say, oh, because I just think, I think they're cool, they're awesome, they're thrilling, they're fun. And yes, they are all those things. Horror films to me are all those things. But also, um, there is a bit, a little bit of psychology into it as well as to how I got attached to horror films when I was a little kid. So I'm going to go into that. And I know lately I've been going to like psychology and stuff like that into my videos. But, you know, if the truth be told that, that there is a psychology to all this. Okay, so, um, about elementary school years, like 1990, 1989, 1990 ish, um, you know, third grade, um, fourth grade ish, you know, I started, those were the years, um, now let me preface this. Now, before I started getting into horror films, now, um, my mom used to take me to the video stores up the road, you know, everywhere from Blockbuster Video, back when they actually had a selection, you know, on VHS, to, um, uh, the video vendor, which was a local mom pop store um, owned around here in Pensacola, Florida, um, and like Alfalfa Video, um, Turtles Music and Video, you know, all these video stores. Um, they would take me out there um, to rent, you know, two movies a piece for me and my brothers and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, so that that's that. But also, before I got into horror films at a very young age, let me just preface by saying I did not like movie violence. Okay, so before I got into horror films, I did not like movie violence. I would cry at movie violence. I would scream at movie violence. I did not like movie violence. Also, let me say that I remember at a very young age when my mom took me to the theater to go see Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I got very upset at that movie. Okay, like I did not like movie violence. I did not like, you know, I just did not like violence at all. Like, so that's who I was like in the age of kindergarten and first grade and stuff like that. Now, I, that does not demean that I was not fascinated by macabre things, but I did not like movie violence. Now, also... At a very young age, I already I was the youngest of my family. I already had older brothers and older sister. I had three older brothers and older sister who introduced me into the game of horror films. So, um, moving up, by the time I was in fourth grade, I think that was about uh, 19, 1989, 1990, um, that is when the kind of cl the storm clouds started setting in for me because that is around the time I started getting picked on in school and bullied. And um, that is also around the time when my brother um, introduced me and made me start watching one afternoon, random, uh, started and made me watch his very own copy, and I'm about to hold it up, and this is the exact copy I'm holding up of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, let me show y'all that this is not a copy I bought off Amazon over the years. This is not a copy I found on eBay. This is, right here, the very copy that my mom either bought for him or he bought the store himself in his middle school years back in 1990-91. So, this was not a copy I would have to rent in my youth to watch. I would come home and I would have it at home to watch. And this was printed in 1988 um, from uh, Video Treasures. So this was a copy at home I could just come home to and watch. Now, I'm gonna to explain to you how this all started. Um, I was not, okay, the very first time he showed me a clip of this, um, I did not know what this was, um, and it was the very end scene of when Sally Hardesty had already jumped through the window and escaped, um, and it was already when the sun came up, and she's running alongside the Black Maria truck, and Leatherface is running right after her, and I didn't know who Leatherface was, I didn't know what it was, all I know was like a man in a weird face with a chainsaw running after a bloody girl, and I was just like, what is that, what is that monster, and he's like, 
that's a, and for some reason, he told me it was a ghost. Now, at this time, I was watching Unsolved Mysteries every week because that show scared me, but I loved it. And uh, I think he told me it was a ghost to soften the blow of what really what Leatherface was. And, um, and I was just like, what, what, why, who, where, why, how, what, what is that? And, um, so that piqued my curiosity even more. So the next day I was like, I want to see the whole movie. So he made, you know, he made me watch the whole movie and that thus is how I became who I am now. <laughs> okay. And, um, and I was so confused. Like, I mean, it scared me. It thrilled me. It, it was, it, I mean, it was just everything to me, but, um, I didn't, I mean, and I was so confused because he told me it was based on a true story. And at the time, I was such a little kid. I was like, but why isn't the guy with the chainsaw killing the people with the cameras recording the whole thing? Because, like, at the time, I thought when he said it was a true story, I thought, like, people were with cameras recording the whole thing that was happening. So I didn't understand why Leatherface wasn't killing the people recording the cameras. Like, I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand, like, the, you know, the the theories, the filmmaking and stuff back then, and he had, and he had explained to me, no, 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 Kevin, like, the, the filmmakers wrote the story based on a true story, and this is, like, actual film, like, the actors are portraying these characters, you know, he had explained it to me, but, um, so, thus, you know, my, you know, my fascination with horror film was born, and my fascination with going to the horror section at the v you know at the video stores, looking at the co the covers and stuff was born. And this VHS was always in the house, so I didn't have to go to the video store to watch it after school. But okay, where I'm going with this is this. Wait. Okay. So I started getting picked on at school, at elementary school a lot. Now, in elementary school, which is uh, kindergarten through fifth grade here in, in Florida, um, you know, middle school is sixth grade through eighth grade, and high school is ninth grade through twelfth grade. Um, in elementary school, you are in one class all day long. You don't go through, like, you know, five period different classes throughout the day. Not until middle school. Middle school is six different classes throughout the day. So you can escape your bullies at least and go to a different class. Here, I was stuck in one class all day. Anyway, so, um, long story short, um, I identified with this movie a lot. Uh, it was like the first horror film I ever fully watched straight through. And it, it scared me, it titillated me, it, it, it was just like, wow, you know, it blew my fucking mind. And I put myself in the shoes of Sally Hardesty, the char lead character of this movie, the, the heroine who survived the ordeal of the uh, Sawyer, the Sawyer clan, the family in this film. Because every day in school, for me, was like what she went through in this film. Now, I'm not saying, oh God, being made fun of and teased in school is like going through a whole entire day of in Texas uh, being um, tortured by the Sawyer clan. No, but as a kid, to me, it was. So it was like this movie got me through school a lot, you know, and every day from school after going through the pressures of being bullied and made fun of in this one class, you know, especially in fifth grade was the worst. The fifth grade was the worst. And it was like I would you know, from the time either my mom dropped me off at school or picked me up or from the time I started taking the bus to school and, you know, t getting the bus home, you know, I would come home and watch this movie and it was like I put myself in Sally's shoes and, you know, from the time that her and her friends get off and spend the day at the house that was her mom, grandma and grandpa's house and then she would go and venture off into the woods and encounter, you know, everything she encounters in this movie with Leatherface, the hitchhiker, and the older brother, the cook, and then Grandpa, and then escapes through jumping out the windows, and then being blood caked and screaming murder, and, you know, everything. I identified as a kid, but in a, in a weird way, it was like... What she went through in the house of horrors in this film was what I went through in my classroom of horrors. Everything from being in school, in my classroom, at my desk, with being made fun of. Um, because, you know, in school, I was I was the weird kid. You know, I wasn't fully entrenched in horror films yet. But by fifth grade, I already was entrenched in horror films. Because I already knew this film. I was already entrenched with all the Nightmare on Elm Streets. I was already fully entrenched with Prom Night. That was one of my favorites. I was fully entrenched with Fright Night. I was fully entrenched with, you know, just 
all these films. But, you know, in third and fourth grade, I was starting to pick up the pieces and learn, you know, because I, I was just, my parents were just starting to let me rent them at that point. Because my older brothers and sisters had already kind of started to let me watch them and stuff. Um, and by that point, they're like, well, ah, he's fine. He's, he can watch and rent them, you know, because all the older brothers and stuff have already seen him and they're fine. But, so every ordeal, every day in school to me was like what Sally went through in this film. So this film got me through a lot in school, in elementary school. It was like everyday bullying I went through, especially in PE, because PE class, I didn't, I was not a sports person. I did not play playing sports or participating. Um, my participation was like with all the, because I was more friends with girls in the class. A lot of the girls like always... All the girls in class, for some reason, always like to sit next to me, and all the other boys in the class would always be like, yeah, he likes hanging out with the girls, and why do all the girls like hanging out with him, and, but they always liked hanging out with me, I always bring like my, because, like, when I was younger, I always liked, you know, doing like Frankenstein models, and painting like Creature of the Black Lagoon models, and stuff like that, like, that's who I was, and I would bring these models to class, or I'd bring my like scary horror books to class, and all the girls would be like, ooh, wow, that's so cool, and stuff, and all the other bully boys who made fun of me would make fun of me for this, and they're like, you like hanging out with girls, you're queer, and stuff like that, and, you know, whatever, um, and all the other girls would be like, you're just jealous, because we like him, and stuff, I don't know, but, so, I had dealt with that on an individual basis, but, you know, and every time I came home, it was like, time to put this movie on, because it was like, I was Sally Hardesty, the classroom was what Sally Hardesty went through, and the House of Horrors was the classroom, Leatherface and the family of cannibals were my bullies in the classroom, and me escaping and jumping out through the window and going through just all the horror was just me getting through the day of school. Like, that's what this was. And eventually, there were so uh, many other horror movies I was watching on a daily basis that equated to my days in school. But that is, like... So, this was, like, 19... Like, this was, like, 89, 1990, you know, whatever, and, you know. And by, like, you know, fifth grade, you know, that was 91, 92. By that time, I was fully entrenched in, you know, all these horror movies because I was able to rent them. So, by fifth grade, so that was, like, 1990, the beginning of 1991 and 92, um... Because I left fifth, I guess fifth grade, you know, ended in ninety two for me. But the beginning of fifth grade was ninety one. Um, I got this VHS, and I was fully obsessed with Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two. Because I was fully obsessed with the idea of being possessed by Freddy Krueger and Freddy Krueger ripping off your body. So by the time when the the boy, the clique of boys were picking on me in fifth grade, um, I was always obsessed with like, oh my god, Freddy rip out my body and kill these kids. <laughs> so anyway, but I was always I was obsessed with the fantasy aspect of that in this film. So my mom bought this for me. I I think she bought this either from Saturday Matinee, which was like the uh, the the uh, sister store to Suncoast Video, um, which was our mall, um, or else from Blockbuster Video up the road when they were actually really cool way back then. Um, I don't remember, but I had this since like fifth, fourth or fifth grade. Um, but anyway, I loved part two when I was a kid because of the whole possession and him ripping out of Jesse's body. And I'd sit in fifth grade class when all the kids would be like, picking on me and th throwing spitballs at me and I'd be like, Freddy, rip out on my body, rip out on my body, rip out on my body, kill them all, you know. And I know that's not healthy, but you know what I mean. Like, I'd be just like, get them, get my bullies. So anyway, but no, like, so I equated to watching horror films as a way of surviving school and my bullies and stuff like that. That's how it began for me. It was like a survival textbook of just getting through school and getting through the school day and it was never about like watching movies and wanting to kill my bullies and so as as my joke I was just making a joke about like Freddy jumping on my body and kill my bullies I didn't mean like kill them it just meant like protect me you know um but um sorry um it, it just these movies these movies were like survival guides to me they you know I put myself in the shoes of the heroine the heroine was the final girl who survived the the ordeals of the bloody ordeals of being tortured and and mass you know going through all the stuff and the chase scenes and those but you see and and that to me was my school day and that's how I equated it and so when I came home it was like I would pop, pop that videotape in and it'd be like oh my god this is my school day and that's how it was for me you know and so that's how horror movies became like a childhood outlet for me to understand of how to deal with my bullying I went through and 
I would kind of put myself in the shoes of the final girl or even the final guy, you know, or whoever. And, you know, and aside from all the bullying psychology aspect, horror movies were just cool to me because, uh, um, you know, um, sometimes the villains are monsters, the creature, the creature features of the creature, you know, the, the creatures from these creature features or whatever were just so fucking cool, you know. And aside from that, you know, you had the special effects from these movies from, like, the pre-CGI days from my heyday of, you know, when I grew up. These movies were so cool because... You know, these special effects were created in front of the camera with made by the hands of man or the women from these special effects teams where you're just like, they were like done in camera where you're, they were like magic tricks and you're like, oh my God, how do they do that gore effect or these creature effects or God knows whatever. You know, these transformation effects where a guy became a werewolf or became an alien or, you know, God knows whatever, just a creature feature, you know? And... So it just, it was all these different things. It was either just a wow effect, you know, a magic trick in front of a camera that wowed me as a kid, or it was just, again, a, a psychology effect on me of how to survive the school day. So uh, it, the horror effect became a um, transgression kind of thing for me, or like a paradigm, like to survive the school day, you know? Um, you know, a metaphor, I guess, would be the word. Or, you know, whatever, you know? Um, so as a little kid... These movies became addicting to me because they were kind of metaphors for my problems at school. Um, and if and not even that, you know, they were just really cool to me. You know, back in the day, you know, before Fangoria existed, uh, there was a man named Forrest J. Ackerman who created a little magazine back in, I think, the 50s or the 60s, I forget, uh, named Famous Monsters of Filmland, you know. And when that came around, there was these kids who, you know became what was known as monster kids you know they would go to the soda pop fountain area you know with the monster magazine rolled up in the back with the hair greased back and you know they wore their passion for monsters and monster movies on their sleeve and that's exactly who i am i was that kid you know who would carry his monster books or monster magazines you know for for me it was fangoria middle school um to school and even in my adult years i would wear you know my hair greased back or even just you know whatever you know, I would wear my, you know, horror movie t-shirts and my Fangoria magazines or even Horror Hound, you know, rolled up in my back pocket to the bars, you know, and a lot of people just knew who I was, you know, as that horror movie guy, you know, and that's just who I am, you know, um, but back when I was a kid getting picked on and stuff, you know, for either not playing sports or not being popular in recess or for hanging out with the girls or, you know, for the girls like hanging out with me or, you know, for just like in the horror films or, you know, just for being gay, you know, for God knows whatever excuse it was. Um, you know, the horror movies was what would I turn to, but not because I liked watching people get murdered, not because I liked watching, you know, sure I liked watching chase scenes, um, but though, cause those were thrilling, they were fun, whatever, they were adrenaline, you know, junky kind of thing, but it was more of like, I put myself in the shoes of the final girl, um, of fighting the evil, surviving over the evil, purveying over the evil of the, 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 the bad guy, the bad guys being my bullies and me surviving over them and getting away. And every day I was Sally Hardesty. Um, jumping through the windows to get to the road on the sunny afternoon to jump in the truck to get away from Leatherface. That truck being my bus. To get on the bus every day to get back home from school. And that right there, my friends, is how I became addicted to horror films. And that's exactly today how I'm addicted to my horror films. And that's exactly how I became who I am right now. And um, it just it never quit, it never stopped, and I just I just became a horror movie nerd from those from that time in nineteen um, nineteen eighty eight all the way nineteen ninety. You know those were the years. You know again like um, I can't remember exactly what 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 date what year was when I first saw this. It had to be like nineteen eighty nine nineteen ninety you know ish, but before then 
before I saw this movie in its full time, you know, my brother was already showing me, you know, because again, I didn't like violence, I didn't like things like that, but my brother was already showing me stuff on TBS, Super Scary Saturdays, you know, like creature features like The Blob and, you know, Empire of the Ants and stuff, and I was already getting into that stuff, but that stuff was real light year, was like real light compared to Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Prom Night and stuff where people get slaughtered, you know, by a text, like chainsaws and axes and stuff. So, it was like a building block 